By request, I'm going to take a look at a data table, one-way data table. We'll do vertical, and then we'll go ahead and do horizontal just to illustrate it. Uh, the thing we want to see sensitivity to is our capex, our time zero capex. And we'd like to see that from 4,000 to 5,000 on up to about 15,000. And we would also, well, what we'd like to see the outputs are going to be these four numbers, the unlevered NPV, I use levered and leveraged interchangeably, the unlevered and the levered NPV and rate of return. Those four items, and I should have moved them up one because what I'd like to do is reference each of the cells. This is a little bit different than how we build a two-way data table. So pay close attention. In a two-way data table, we would put our output right here because we only have one output, but we have a column input and a row input. In a one-way data table, we can have as many outputs as we want and only one input. So let me format these as outputs. They're not really outputs of our model, but it seems to help students visualize what's going on here. Those are our inputs. And then to run the data table, we go to data, what if analysis, data tables, and this familiar screen, this familiar dialog box comes up. There is no row input cell, so we're gonna leave it blank but there is a column input cell. And where we want these numbers to go in, oh, look what I've done. Can't really plug them in here because that's a formula. Actually, I probably could. Let me test that. Yeah, it actually does overwrite that formula temporarily just to get these values. And then we go back to having the formula in there. So Excel remembers what was in there before it changed the values. Another way to do that would have been to divide these by a thousand, do four, five, on up to 15, data, what if analysis, data table. And this time we should put these numbers in the linked cell. And we get the same answers that we did before. I think that's a little bit better practice. If we were, if we want to think of this as the input, then that way we're not going to mess it up if we use something like a goal seek, etc. If we use this in any way except a data table, chances are we're going to overwrite that formula. So whichever way you like to do it is fine with me. I am now going to show you how to do a one-way data table horizontally. I'm going to copy those, paste special and transpose. However you get to paste special, the way I get there, I actually use the old fashioned formula, Alt E, and notice there's no E up here, but if I hit Alt and then E, it says, gosh, you're an old guy. So yeah, those are legacy navigation menus. If you remember the rest of it, you can go ahead and use it, but otherwise we're not going to give you any help. They're trying to wean people off of those old shortcuts. But back in the day, there used to be a menu item called Edit. And so you could hit Alt-E for Edit, and then S for Paste Special, and then E again for Transpose. So Alt-E-S-E is how I would put those on there. Copy these. Alt-E-S-E. And then we need to reference these. I'm not going to take my chances with paste transpose. Just put those references in by hand. Then if I select the entire section, do an alt data, what if analysis, data tables. This time I do have a row input cell and I want to put those numbers into that linked cell we used before, but I do not have a column input cell. And if you look closely, these numbers match up with these numbers. 
So what can we do with this? Well, I think a chart would look really handy on this to help us understand just how the metrics are changing. So let's add a chart. Select my X and Y data, Alt N for insert, D for XY scatter chart, and then choose one. And it shows that the MPV goes down as the capex goes up. Makes sense. I'd like to do a little bit more to this chart, but first I'm going to add, I'm going to come up here to my series formula and add the chart name. And then if I'll just click on the chart itself, I can drag these to the right to add three more series. However, the NPV is measured in the thousands and the rate of return is measured in percentages. I'm going to right click on one of those NPV format that data series and plot it on the secondary axis. It's almost like it knew I was going to ask that. And then I'm going to come back and get the other rate of return format data series, plot that one on the secondary axis. And then I'll have to add axis titles to the secondary vertical. And so this will be rate of return. We've got a leveraged and an unleveraged. So we'll have to add a legend so that we can see those. And fortunately we already, let me click on one of these. We already had these uh, in the R series up here for all four. So they pop up right where they should be. If we wanted to rearrange the order of these, since this one's on the bottom, it's a little bit misleading. This one is a two. I actually want to change it to a four. Just a bigger number than the orange one to flip-flop these two. And then to flip-flop these two, I'll get that blue one and make it a bigger number. So we'll put it second in the list. And so working from the top down, we have the gray with a which is first in the list the blue which is second in the list the yellow which is third in the list and the orange which is fourth in the list i think i'll make these percentages you can only change that if you unlink it from the source and it may be different on a mac and we also want to only show, well, show zero decimal places. Okay, so our rate of return in percent, our NPV, let's unlink that from the source, show it in currency with zero decimal places. And these labels, I'm going to Format the labels to be low. Get them off of the chart. That's a little bit easier to look at. And we see that all of our metrics are degrading as the capex goes up. So nice little chart for the for the dashboard. Sometimes on a dashboard it's nice to just format that chart area and give it no border and no fill and that may look nicer to you in some cases i think probably if i had it to do over again i would put the border on but leave the fill off let's do one more thing let's say that we wanted by the way let me come back sensitivity of four metrics to capex same thing here sensitivity of four metrics to capex. Before I do a two-way data table, let me clean up a couple of things here. You know, I formatted these as currency when I thought I was going to tie them to the currency cell. I ended up tying them to the spinner, which is really just an integer. So let me go ahead and fix that by coming up here and making them general. And then doing the same thing here, select all those control Y to repeat. And I think I wanted to highlight these and format them as outputs. 
just because I want you to get a really good visual of what a one-way vertical data table looks like and what the same information on a one-way horizontal data table looks like. Notice that in neither one do we have this corner cell filled in. Now I'd like to go back and do a two-way data table so we can talk about conditional formatting. We may have done this early in the semester. Just for time, I'm going to copy those and paste them. And then I'm going to, let's say that our, our base case was a 10% discount rate and that was $10,000 here. So I'm going to just grab these out of ease and do an alt ESE to paste them transposed. Okay, so here we are looking at sensitivity of unlevered NPV to discount rate and CapEx. So I'm going to say that my base case discount rate is here. So I'm going to put discount rate and my base case CapEx. Well, I guess base case CapEx is 10 as well. Let's make it nine in this case. And then we need to grab our output here as an unlevered NPV. Let's format that as an output. And I should label my CapEx amount. Then you're quite familiar with how to build this data table. We have CapEx at time zero going in here. And we have our discount rate, in this case, linked cell going in here. We want to confirm that, oops, that at $9,000 and 10% discount rate, we get the 1901, which matches the 1901. So we did that correctly. And now how do we put that over here on the data table? Well, before I do, let me show you the, the uh, conditional formatting. I don't get too crazy with conditional formatting. I just like to use the color scale right here. The first one I come to, it's Alt HLS is the PC shortcut. And so we can do that a lot. And then what we find is that things get worse as CapEx goes up and discount rate goes up. Things get better as those two things go down. So we'd like to put this on the data table. We can pick this up and either cut and paste or just drag it onto the data table. And we might want to come in here, change these cells blue. You can do this however you like, but I think that makes sense right there. Might want to format these as some kind of currency without any decimal places. And we'd want to say what this was, it's sensitivity. I'm going to paste it as a value so I don't have to change the shading of that cell. Move this chart out of the way. I sure hope your dashboard looks better than this one. And now we've got our sensitivity to CapEx and discount rate. Put that in thousands. Put that in a percent. And it should work that way. We can do some fancy things to hide this. Uh, one would be to change the font color to the same color as our background. That may be as good as any. Other people do pretty creative things to hide that. But we've now done a couple of different one-way data tables. We've done a two-way data table. We've done the conditional formatting to show the low numbers, high numbers and low numbers and we've got the chart on there. So I think that probably wraps up this video.